You are listening to King Jesus Radio, the official podcast of New Living Way Church. And comforted in these truths and his word because he is good to us. So we want to welcome you today and don't get too comfortable, but get comfortable to get ready to worship God because we're going to come together to worship him, to praise him, Amen. and to be ministered under him and by his word and by his Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy, Father, for we know that they follow us all the days of our lives, Lord. Father, thank you for reminding us, Lord, that it's important, Father, Lord, to want to be in your presence. Lord, thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit and your presence, Lord, that we can be in, Father, and be a part, Father, corporally, Lord Jesus, in one accord also, Father, individually, because you know, Father, Lord, how much we need you, and you are a very personal God to us, Lord. Thank you for this day, Lord. Father, thank you that this service, Father, we lift up to you, Lord. You have your way in our hearts and in our minds, Lord, and lead us and guide us, Father, Lord, in truth and in wholeness, Lord, to worship you and to be in the mind frame, Father, to be attentive to your word so that we can hear what you have to say to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you for providing for us, Lord, for meeting our needs, Lord, and for being with us this day in this service, Lord, and for all who are going to still continue, Father, to join us, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you know each and every one, and they're all blessed by you. We love you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise this morning. Amen. And we just want to congratulate Chantel and Zachary this morning for giving their lives to the Lord this morning. Amen. It is a new day today. Praise God because of your faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And you know, there's nothing like giving your life to the Lord. It's a new day. It's a new start. It's a freshness. Amen. And you know what? It's a new walk. And it's just a day-by-day walk trusting the Lord. Amen. But just know he has a plan and a purpose for you. And that plan is for good and not for evil to bring you hope and a future. Amen. So praise God for that. Amen. And we're just so grateful to the Lord to be here today. So thankful to the Lord. And, uh, you know, we also do want to remember as well, you know, we want to be thankful for all the lives of this weekend. It's Memorial Day weekend. Amen. It's not just about the barbecues. Amen. <laughs> There's actually a holiday. It's a, it's a day that, you know, it's a remembrance of all the lives that have been lost in, you know, the wars and those that have given their lives for this country. Amen. So we want to take this time right now just to remember them and to be into to, to honor them amen and to honor all those today that you know have lost loved ones you know have lost family members you know friends you know people that have given their lives and today you know what they miss them you know they miss them but you know what thank the lord that you know what they went over there and they, they made the decision to be there whether they were drafted or volunteered whatever it may have been but you know what thank god because you know what today we're able to be here today worshiping the lord praising god today because of the freedoms that we have to be able to do so amen so praise the Lord for that. So we're going to pray right now for those families. Yes, Brother AJ. Yes, amen. 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 Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before your throne this day, Father God, and we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for a beautiful day that you have given us, Lord. And Father God, today, Lord Jesus, we lift up all the families to you today, Father God. Lord Jesus, my God, Lord, that have lost loved ones in Father God, fighting, Lord Jesus, wars and going to war and all these different things, Lord God. And today, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just ask you, Father Lord, for the comfort, Lord Jesus, Father God, of knowing, Lord Jesus, that Father, their death were not in vain, my God. That, Father, there was a purpose, Lord. And, Father, we are here today and able to enjoy those, Father God, reasons and purposes today for the freedoms that we have today in this country, Lord. We know we don't live in a perfect country, Lord. But, Lord, we do live in a good country, Lord. And we're thankful, Lord, for the freedoms that we do have in this country, Lord. And one of those freedoms is, is to be able, Lord, to preach the gospel, to praise you openly, Father God, and to be able to declare who you are, Lord Jesus. So, Father, we just thank you this day, Heavenly Father. We thank you for this time today. We thank you for your peace and your comfort and your joy, my God. And we just thank you, Lord, my God, for the lives that are still serving this country today, Lord. Father, knowing, Lord God, that, Father, anything could happen, Lord, but we just ask you to protect them, to watch over them, Lord. And, Father God, Lord Jesus, to make it clear, Lord, why they're really over there and what they're fighting for, Lord. Because, Father, Lord, many times these scenes get clouded, Lord. And, Father, God, Lord, sometimes the purpose and the vision and the, the hope is, is lost, Lord. But we just ask you to, Father, God, to bring it back to light 
and the reasons, Father, why, Lord Jesus, they fight for this country, Lord. So, Father, we just thank you this day, Lord God, and we give you the glory and the praise and the honor, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And, Father, today we thank you, Lord, that we have the name above all names, Lord God. And, Father, today in Jesus' name we lift up all the families, Lord God, that have been lost, Lord Jesus, in this school shooting, Lord God, the children, my God, and the parents and the brothers and the sisters and the cousins and the aunts and the uncles, the, the spouses, Father God, Lord Jesus, of those teachers, Lord God, and the spouse that just passed away, Lord God. We just lift up these families in the community, Lord God, and all those working in the school, the first responders, Lord God, the doctors, the nurses, everyone that witnessed these events, my God. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you for comfort in this time, Lord to comfort our country in this time, Lord, as we as a country are mourning, my God, over these things, my God, that have happened and continue to happen, Lord. Father God, for the families, Lord, in the shooting in Buffalo, Lord, the families of the shooting at the church, my God. Father, in Jesus' name, our country is hurting. Our country is mourning and grieving, Lord. And Lord, we just ask you for comfort, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Help us as a church, Father God, to be the ones that are able to comfort as we ourselves are comforted, Lord, as your word tells us, Lord. So, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, we don't have all the answers, Lord, and we don't know everything that is going on, but, Lord, we trust you, Lord, and our hope is continually in you, Father God. And, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our children to you today, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, and we just cover them under your precious blood, my God. All the schools, my God, the elementary kids, the middle school kids, the high schoolers, the colleges, my God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we ask you for the wisdom and the guidance and the direction that is needed for our country, Lord, of how to protect our schools better, Lord, to how to make provisions and finances, Lord God, for the necessary needs that are needed for our schools, Lord. But most importantly, my God, the need for you, Lord Jesus, the need that our children have for you and knowing you, Lord, that Father God, even through these times, Lord God, that can seem so frightening, Lord, but thank you for the peace that is in our children's hearts today that they can know you, Lord and that they do know you, Lord, and that no matter what happens, Lord, you are their God, their Lord, their Savior. And Jesus, we thank you that you have given them the name above all names, Lord. Oh, we just praise you this morning. We glorify your holy name this morning, and we just thank you this morning, for you truly are great, my God. And we thank you for your peace and your comfort, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, this week there is no Bible study um, and there's no uh, Friday night ministry. So you guys enjoy and have a blessed week. Amen. We encourage you. Don't, don't stop reading your Bibles. Don't stop praying, you guys. You know, it's not a vacation away from God. It's just a vacation away from our, our normal study and a normal uh, Friday night ministry class. So we just encourage you to enjoy your week. I pray that you guys are refreshed for all those that have the day off tomorrow. Praise the Lord. You guys enjoy it. I, guess, I know you get to stay up a little bit later tonight. Amen. I know I do. So amen. So praise God for that. And you guys just enjoy and, and, and enjoy that time. Amen. Um, so I think those are all the announcements right now, I believe. So we are going to go ahead and dismiss the rich kids rooted in Christ. Amen. So you guys do have class this morning. So you guys enjoy. And don't worry, rich kids, we won't be too long. Amen. <laughs> amen. Well, praise the Lord. And we're going to turn our Bibles this morning to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. I was asking the Lord, are we going to keep them all in today? And it was, you know, just waiting, waiting on the Lord. But no, we're going to have class today. Amen. Father, we just thank you this morning for your word. We thank you, Father God, as we come to you today, Lord Jesus, thanking you, Lord, as you teach us through your word, as you speak to us through your word. And we just thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for all that you've prepared for the kids next door, Lord God. And thank you, Father God, just for this time together today, Lord, as we come together to seek you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Well, this morning's message came from, actually from prayer, from Wednesday night. On Wednesday night, we met together for about an hour before Bible study, and we just took some time to pray, you know, because how many of us know that our hearts are heavy, you know, with everything that's been going on and this school shooting this past week, and it's just been heavy hearts, you know. There's just not a lot of what we could say, but what we can do is we can pray. And I know that uh, many of you that I text, you were praying along with us from home, wherever you were at. Thank you for joining us in prayer because together that's the one thing we can do is pray, is pray for our country, to pray for the families, to pray for one another. Amen. And so through the prayer, you know, you know, because a lot of times we come to a place where it's like, well, I don't have the words. But through that prayer came, but we have the name. We have the name. We have the name of Jesus. So we might not know what to say. It's like when I'm afraid and I'm scared, you know, and we're going through certain things or, you know, I just, I'm on the road. And all of a sudden, you know, that car almost hits me, you know, and you almost end up in an accident or whatever it is. And all of a sudden your heart is pounding. And you just, and you're just like, Jesus, all I can say is Jesus. But I've learned that's all I need to say <laughs> is Jesus. And sometimes that's all I can do is say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When somebody upsets me, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I'm happy, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I'm looking for wisdom, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I need to know what to do, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When the bank account's acting kind of funny, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen? <laughs> we can call upon the name of the Lord. But not only that, when Brother AJ comes to me and says his bank account is also acting a little funny, I can also use that same name, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. The Lord is your provider, brother. Whoo! We have the name of Jesus. So I may not know what to say, but I can pray. And I could start to pray in the name of Jesus because I believe that in the name of Jesus, he is able to do so. He is able to make a way. And I might not know what to say, and I might not even know how to pray, but that's why I just got to trust and say in the name of Jesus. And if that's all I say, well, praise the Lord <laughs> because he knows. Now, the person may be looking at you like, that's all you got? You know, but that's all you need. <laughs> It's in the name of Jesus. I encourage you to do that for somebody one day. It's in the name of Jesus. And you're like, what, what, that's it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. So that's the title of today's message. We have the name. We have the name, the name of Jesus. And, you know, we're talking about that today, that we do have so many things going on the school shootings, and not only that, but, you know, this week, a lot of you probably got texts, you probably saw in the news, or maybe your own kid, I know my nephew went through it, their schools were on lockdown, Rosemead High closed the other day because of a threat, and now you get all these threats that are going on in our schools and trying to bring fear to our children, and on Friday night, we were able to spend some time with some of the youth that were able to come out that day and just encourage them that they could still be comforted and they don't have to fear. They don't have to fear going to school. They don't have to fear continuing to live, coming to church, and doing what needs to be done. But how many of us know that that only can come by the comfort and the faith that we have in knowing who our Jesus is? It's knowing, Lord, no matter what happens, Lord, I can trust you. By you being here today, you're an overcomer because if you had fear and you came, you overcame that fear. If you go to the market and you had fear, you overcame that fear. You're not allowing, it's not that fear is not real, but you're not allowing the fear to keep you down. And you might have to press through that fear of letting your child go and dropping them off at school, but still you trust the Lord because you know that that child is in the Lord's hands. And that is in everything and everyone in our lives that we have to trust the Lord. We have the rumors of wars and wars going on, all the stuff that's going on in Ukraine. 
We have the racial things that are going on, the shooting in Buffalo and all the shootings that have happened over before because of race. But don't go too far because even in our own neighborhoods, gang violence is on the rise again. There was a shooting right here in East L.A. during the day. In Montebello in a 7-Eleven right at 10 o'clock at night. And if you grew up in the neighborhood, you know how that is. But thank God that we have the name above all names and we don't have to fear. We can trust the Lord because we have the name of Jesus who is the one who is the living word. He is the living word. And he is all that we need. Let's hold our place here in John and let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. It says, therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Praise be to God. Because there will come a day where every knee will bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. But we're choosing to do that today. We're choosing to say, Lord, you are our God, our Lord. You are God of all. You know all things. And some may say, well, then how come God didn't stop it? We live in a fallen world today where people make decisions and do things because of our fallen nature. But we could still trust in the Lord, even though we may not have all the answers to everyone's questions, because there's a lot of questions right now. There is a lot of questions, but right now is not the time to turn to politics, to turn to different things. It's to turn to the Lord. Right now is not the time to put our faith in man, but to put our faith in Jesus Christ and him alone. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 through 13. He says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for, for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? He's addressing that there should not be division in the church over doctrine, over what people are saying, over thoughts, over denominations, over political backgrounds. That is not to be in the church. We are one in Christ Jesus. Whether you're Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, whatever you are, we are children of God. Whatever our freedoms are in this country and whatever your stance is, but we are still children of God. This is not about following man or man's rules or traditions. It's about following Christ. What the world needs today is Jesus. What the world needs today is Jesus, and it always has needed Jesus, and it will always need Jesus. Because I needed Jesus, you needed Jesus, and the world needs Jesus. Because he's the only one that can bring about the change that this world is crying out for. Because the change doesn't start out there first. The change starts with here, within our hearts, within this mind of how we think. 
I read a sad article the other day, yesterday. And don't get me wrong, my prayer is for this individual, but Jamie Foxx put it out there. He says if these things are going on and yet we refuse to do anything about it, and these people who are so-called Christians call themselves that and are allowing this, he said, forget it. I don't want nothing to do with it. And what hardened my, what's, what's sad in my heart about that is that many people will look at that and think that is Christ. Many will allow that to draw them away from Christ because their focus is not on Christ but on man on gun laws and all these different things and people fighting for their freedoms. We have freedom in Christ. And with those freedoms, we choose to lay them down for the sake of others. What does Christ want to do? What is Christ declaring? What is God speaking today? But are we willing to hold on to what, well, this is mine and this is my right? Well, praise God for that. But are you willing to lay down your right as Jesus laid down his life for the sake of others so that they can have life? That doesn't take away my, um, that reminds me how free I am to be able to lay it down. I'm not here to take any sides today. I'm here to point me and you so we can point the world to Jesus Christ. Don't don't be led astray. I thank God for our leaders. I thank God for those in places of government. But they are not the leaders of the church. They are men and women that need God just like me and you need God, and we need to pray for them that God will give them the wisdom that they need to lead. But we still need Christ. We're not looking to overthrow a government, no. Jesus didn't come preaching against Rome. You know that Jesus was crucified because of jealousy? He was crucified because he was rejected. Yes, the verdict was that he was preaching against Caesar, but that was never the case. Jesus came preaching the good news, the gospel, and they killed him for it. That is our stance as Christians today. It's when we're persecuted for preaching and bringing and living for the gospel. That's it. Everything else, that's man. That is man. The Bible talks about persecution for preaching and living out the gospel. Because of our faith in Jesus Christ and the freedom we have in Christ. The Bible tells us to pray for our government, to pray for our leaders, to pray for our president but to always know and acknowledge, but God, you are Lord of all. You have all the power and all the authority. So no matter what Putin puts out there or any leader in this world, God, you're still God. You're still Lord, and no one compares. We're here to preach the gospel, the good news. We're here to live out the good news in this world today so others can come to know Christ. As hard as it may be, we have to understand that the Lord is waking us up as a church because we need to be reminded, Lord, our time is short here. We're not promised tomorrow. And what we see is what the Bible says will happen. But he's also preparing us, he says, to be ready because he's coming back. That song that says, people get ready. Jesus is coming. Soon we'll be going home. He's coming back. But see, the Bible doesn't go into detail of exactly what will happen. God bless you. He just says these things will happen, 
Many ask, well, what about the United States? I don't see them in there, and we're trying to figure it out. Stop trying to figure it out. <laughs> Just leave it alone. Just let the Lord do it and trust him and look up for our redemption draws near. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. We need to keep living for Jesus. We need to keep serving Jesus. We need to keep looking to Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Because as we spoke in the morning, if the Lord is your shepherd, then you shall not want. Because he will lead me and you through. He'll lead me and you through for this life and the life to come for all eternity. It does rain on the just and the unjust. We do go through the same storms. We do die as Christians. But we die with a hope of glory knowing to where we go. It's a hope in a peace within our hearts. But that's not to boast. That's to share with others that they could also have that surety, that hope, that peace that comes from knowing Christ. Because that's what it's all about. I just want to read this prayer here in John 17. And we're just going to go through this chapter and just let God's word be God's word. Amen? Jesus prayed this for his disciples at a time where they were saddened, they were heavy hearted, because he told them he was about to leave them. He was about to be crucified. And he was going to die. But he also encouraged them and gave them hope that he would, not, he would not leave them alone. He would give them the Holy Spirit. But then he went into this prayer, which mine is titled the High Priestly Prayer. And we're going to read this together. It says, when Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now, that, now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. He's talking about how they now believe in him, and they believe everything he has said to them. For I have given them, verse 8, for I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. So this is his prayer to the Father saying, they believe in me. They believe you sent me. They're, they're putting their faith in your son. And verse 9 says, I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them. Here it is. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. See, he's saying we're one in him. We're one in his name. We become one. No matter our background, our culture, whatever it is, we are now one in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Verse 12 says, while I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction that the scripture might be fulfilled. 
Verse 13, but now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, <clears throat> just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them, set them apart for your purpose in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent them into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate, <clears throat> set apart myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. That they also may be set apart in truth. Verse 20, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. See, this just wasn't for the disciples. This now becomes for me and you. Because we're believing today because this word went through them and has continued and made it all the way to us today. 2,000 years later, and over 2,000 years later, and we're still hearing the word and believing the same thing that the disciples believed. So in verse 20 again, he says, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. The glory, the honor that you have given me, he says, now I have given it to them. You know that you have the glory, the honor of God with you today? Because Christ had it, he gave it to me and you. And when others see you, they see the glory of God working through your life. You radiate the glory of God. Amen? Look around real quick. Check it out. You guys are radiating the glory of God right now. Amen? Oh, you got shy on me. Okay. Amen. 23, I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you love me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Talking about eternal salvation. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. Verse 26, I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. The Amplified Version says, verse 26, like this. This is the purpose of this whole prayer. This is the purpose of the whole thing of him sending out the disciples and us today it says, and I have made your name known to them, and I will continue to make it known. So the love with which you have loved me may be in them, overwhelming their heart, and I may be in them. This proves to me and you that no matter what happens, God's love for us never changes. God's love for humanity never changes. He still loves me and you. And though we may go through stuff and face things, and though many families today are hurting, but that does not change the love of God that he has for this world today. He made his name known to us and continues to make it known to us today. So that the love that the Father had for Jesus may be in us as well. Me and you have the love of God today within us. We have the Holy Spirit, and because we have the Holy Spirit, we also have the love of God. And that's why it does hurt when we hear these things. That's why it hurts when we see these things. That's why we mourn when others are mourning. That's why we rejoice when others are rejoicing. This is why it's such a burden on our hearts because of the love of God that is within me and you. And that love loves others. That love is died for others. 
So it's that love that me and you have today within us by that name in the name of Jesus that now me and you are able to share that love with one another. To share it with somebody that we don't have the answers to what they need or what they're going through, but we have the name. And in that name, we can start to pray in Jesus' name, but it's not only praying in that name, but we're praying by his spirit and also by his love, the love of God that is unconditional, that is everlasting, that is steadfast, that is unfailing, a love like no other. So when you open your mouth and start to pray in the name of Jesus, whether they're standing right there or not, whether it's in the middle of your room, whether it's in your car, wherever you're praying, when you start to pray in the name of Jesus, it's that love that starts to overwhelm you because you're reminded of the love he has for you. And now that love starts to overpour, outpour to those around you. And you start to pray from a place because of the love of God that he has for them. Prayer is much more than just a couple of words that we're saying. Prayer is part of the relationship that we have with God the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ. And I don't always know what to pray, but what I'm learning is when I allow the Holy Spirit, he starts to teach me what to pray. But it's just believing. Starting within the name of Jesus. And let the Lord start to lead from there. Because I don't have all the answers. I don't have the, all the answers to all your questions. I don't even have all the answers to all my questions. Because I got a lot of questions. But I have the answer. You have the answer. And his name is Jesus. The one who knows all things. And we can trust him. See, his word says you will go through trials and tribulations. But be of good cheer. You have overcome the world. <laughs> I can't stand up here and tell you that you will never see death. That you never go through anything. But I can tell you, there is a name that keeps you. There is a name that strengthens you. There is a name that is faithful to you. And there is a name that is greater. And even in death, we have the victory because we have eternal life in Christ Jesus to be with him forever. He is our protector. He is our shield. And our responsibility is to pray over our households over our families, over our kids, over our communities, the schools, the jobs. Because these things can happen anywhere at any time. But that does not mean we live in fear. It does not mean we become private eyes and, oh, is that somebody like that? <laughs> no. That means we live trusting God and saying, Lord, you lead me, you guide me, you direct me. And I'm sure I'm not the only one in here that can testify that at one point in your life, at least, or maybe many points, you meant to go somewhere, you meant to do something, and you ended up not, and then find out later that something happened. And I look back and say, well, Lord, that was you. But why me and not them? I can't answer that question. But all I can say is, thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to trust you. And we can trust the Lord through these times. And no matter what you hear on the news or what may come and what is going on today and all these rumors and all these different things, we have the name, the name of Jesus. And when you're around somebody else that is just overwhelmed and, you know, just stressed out or whatever it may be, we have the name. And you can share with them. You can pray with them. And maybe you can't pray with them right then and there. But you can take that time in your personal time and just pray for them. I do that many times in my job. 
I'll just take that time and pray. I'm working. <laughs> but I'll take that moment just to pray for somebody. I've learned, the pastor before, Pastor Abel taught me one time, and I remember he said it. You know, many times I'll say, you know, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. But what if I forget? Because I, I forget a lot of things. And then later on, like, hey, thank you for praying for me. Yeah, amen. And don't get me wrong. Come on, that's only me? All right. Praise God. Okay. All right, amen, amen. So you've always prayed for me every time. So you pray for me? All right. We won't go there. Amen. But <laughs> the Lord knows, right? But when you have that opportunity right then and there and you're able to, I encourage you, pray for that person. Pray for Even if they reject it, pray for that person. We were walked outside a door one day and the door slammed behind us. But we still pray for that person. Because that's what we do. And you may forget later. God won't forget, though. Thank God for his mercy. Amen? He heard the prayer. <laughs> but we take that time to pray every chance we get, to pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean you just shut yourself in a room all day. I mean, that's good if that's what the Lord leads you. But it's just your life throughout the day in prayer. And I, one thing I learned, like, another thing Pastor Abel taught me is he would never say amen. I'm not saying not to say amen, but what that does just kind of leaves that open door for all day prayer. Amen. Oh, I'm not done praying yet, Lord, but I'm going to go all my day, but I know I'm going to be doing some more praying today. And just keep it going. Amen. Keep it going. Keep it going. And just in communion with him. Remember, you could talk to God. You could be honest with God. I love that. I'm not saying he always likes what he's hearing, but, you know, I thank God he loves us. Amen. So we have the name, amen? What's that, who's that, what's that name? Amen, hallelujah, amen. I, I think I caught you off guard. What's that name again? All right, amen. And we're going to pray in the name of who? Amen. And when you're afraid, who are you going to call on? When you got some lack in the bank account? <laughs> amen. I don't know why I got to keep going there, so I know I'm preaching to someone, if not all of us, Amen. Father, we just thank you this morning, Lord God, and we give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this day today, Lord God, and we thank you for this time. We thank you, Father God, for your peace and your comfort, Lord, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word today. Because, Lord Jesus, you prayed, my God, to keep your people in your name, Lord God. And, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, because of that name today, we have your love living within us and through us, Lord. And we ask you, Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, to help us to grow, Lord, in the fruits of the Spirit, Lord. Because, Father God, that is part of your Holy Spirit, Lord. And, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today as you comfort our hearts, Lord. Because, Father God, when we don't know what to do or our backs are up against the wall, Lord, we're just hurting, Lord. But, Lord, thank you for reminding us that we have your name, the name of Jesus. And we could call upon you. Lord, we're not just calling it just to call on your name, Lord. We're calling on that name because we know you, Lord. And we have a relationship with you, Lord. So, Father God, we just thank you today, Lord, for your name and the one to whom that name belongs to. The Lord of lords and the King of kings, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, Father, today, Lord, many are hurting today. And in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, that, Lord, they would be able to know you and be comforted by you, Lord. Because, Lord Jesus, only you can comfort those in such a place of pain and hurt, such a place of grief and mourning, Lord God. Because, Father God, Lord Jesus, no one can know, Father God, the hurts that someone goes through, Lord. Only you, Lord. And no one can understand the joy in someone's heart. But, Jesus, you can, Lord. So, Father, we thank you for the joy that we have in you today, Lord. Oh, we just praise you this morning. I want to ask that every head bowed and every eye closed right now. If there is someone in here, someone else that does not know the Lord today, and you would like to know the Lord, and even those watching with us today, today is the day of salvation. And the Lord is drawing you by his spirit. And if that is you today, I'm just going to ask that you would raise your hand in here today. For those watching online, just right where you're at. We want to give everyone an opportunity today to know the Lord, to give the heart to Jesus. So this morning, we're just going to ask you to pray with us this morning.
a prayer of faith that you believe in your heart. Amen. Lord Jesus, we come to you today, and I ask you for forgiveness of all my sins. I acknowledge I need a Savior, and I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sins and you rose again on the third day. And I ask you, Lord, to be my Lord, to be my Savior, and to write my name in your Lamb's Book of Life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and I thank you this day for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. If you did that today, I know those that did it to here today with us and those watching with us, let someone know. Amen. And we're just grateful to the Lord today. Thank you for being here today. We're thankful to the Lord this morning for being so good. Amen. Let me encourage you, continue to pray for the kids. Lay hands on your children, you know, pray over them. You know, just encourage them. You know what? We're comforted, and in that comfort, we're able to comfort others, but they don't have to fear, amen? And I know that we're going to be praying for them next door right now, and I know they're, you know, Lord speaking to them and ministering to their hearts as well right now, amen? But praise the Lord, we have the name of Jesus, so let's continue to declare that name because his name brings life and gives life, amen? Amen. We are dismissed. Enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your holiday, and be safe, amen? God bless you.